we had a year-end function for orphans and un- underprivileged people in South Africa. And I noticed a young boy running up to the candy sweets table, collecting some candy and just sticking it in his pocket. After a little while, he was back again at the same tables, collecting more candy, sticking in his pocket, but not eating any by himself. After a while, I asked the teacher, why is this boy just collecting food? And she told me he was collecting food for his three-year-old sister because it was her day to eat. And at that moment, I knew we had to make a difference and we had to do something to help this. So in agriculture, we have a supply problem, but more importantly, we have a distribution problem. 90% of lettuce that's consumed domestically comes from two spots, Yuma, Arizona, and Salinas Valley, California. One is a literal desert, and the other one might as well be a desert because of all the water restrictions. If you come into Yuma, you come over this ridge of mountains as you come in, and it's just sand dunes, and it looks awesome. And all of a sudden, you are greeted with this carpet of red and green. And it's in the middle of nowhere, and it's in the middle of the desert, and it's beautiful. Um, and right after you get smacked in the face with the beauty, you get smacked in the face with the unrealistic production of that crop in the middle of the desert. They're, they just flood the fields and they dump it down. You, wanna, you wonder why we're running out of water. In addition to the water strain and the environmental strain, you also have labor issues. That's a problem, but then you've got this whole distribution problem along with it. So Salinas Valley is about 1,500 miles from the state of Texas. On the East Coast, it's more like 3,000 miles. So what I'm telling you is nine times out of 10, if you're in Boston or New York, chances are you're going to be eating a 3,000 mile salad. That is environmentally and financially unsustainable. We've got to fix that problem. And that's where Eat In Green comes in. How can we make it more efficient? How do we use less resources to, to achieve the same object? Currently, there are two solutions within the controlled environment ag industry. On one hand, you've got vertical farms that are compact and dense, but they're really expensive to operate. And on the other hand, you've got sprawling greenhouses that are more economical, but they're away from population centers and they don't solve the distribution problem. So what if you could combine the economics of a greenhouse with the verticality of these indoor farms. Our patented technology allows us to be one very, very close to the consumer. In fact, adjacent to distribution centers. The second thing that it does is it allows us to be in and around population centers, which allows us to then employ the local community. And the third, because it's local and because we can produce consistently 12 months out of the year, and because we've cut out almost all of the distribution and supply chain costs, it is very, very affordable for the average consumer. So I like to say that we provide USDA fancy and grade one produce at an everyday affordable price. This is not an answer just for the US. It is globally. If you look at any place on the planet where you've got droughts, famine, whatever, to roll one of these greenhouses out and then sustainably be able to stabilize an area, because that's where it starts. If the people don't have food, that's where your instability starts. We take away that food mile because we're agnostic to, to climate conditions, which is a big thing. The system's been designed to take away risk. You know, um, everything is automated in the greenhouse. It's a matter of putting these out to the wall uh, and, and do multiples off. I think that the potential for our company to solve problems is so immense and so promising that it's impossible to pass up. Eating Green really shines, not necessarily because of the technology, but because of the team. When you've got inventors like Jacques and Eugene who are constantly innovating, constantly pushing the bounds of what we can do to grow produce really 
quickly, really affordably, and you know, in a in a really safe environment, uh, that is really pushing the rest of the team to come up in terms of operations, to come up in terms of plant safety and plant growth. And guys like Aaron are perfect to meet that uh, sort of push that we have internally. And Aaron, because he's so focused on plant growth and plant health, it's a perfect balance to that technological and that innovative push that Jacques and Eugene provide. And I really, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to empower and manage that team and to get roadblocks out of their way and then to support them and surround them with other team members that can help them accomplish that goal. So the vision for Eating Green is to really have a mesh network of these greenhouses all around the United States and ultimately all around the world. It's not about building one, it's about building a hundred. And we're gonna do that. We're only gonna bring fresh produce and sustainability answers to you, but we're gonna bring jobs and opportunity and knowledge. This is what Green Green's gonna do. We're gonna do one greenhouse at a time everywhere we can. <laughs>